Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about app settings, how to create configurable system settings using two functions we're going to create called get setting and put setting for your Microsoft Access database. This will allow you to change defaults and the behavior of your application without actually rewriting code and pushing an update and all that kind of stuff. Today's question comes from Graham in Fort Worth, Texas, one of my Platinum members. Graham says, I want parts of my database to be configurable without having to change VBA code and push out an update every time. For example, I want to be able to change default values, toggle certain features on or off, or temporarily disable part of the system. When we do inventory on Sunday afternoons, I want to disable the order entry system so no one can place an order and said they get a message saying the order entry system is down during inventory. What's the easiest way to store and retrieve system-wide settings like this in Microsoft Access? Well, Graham, in a nutshell, the easiest way to do this is to simply make a system settings table, which we're gonna do today. And then you can read and write values to that table. And if it's shared on a network drive on your backend, everybody on the network can read the same set of system defaults. Now, about three years ago, I did this video where I show you how to set up a system defaults table, but we just literally set up the table and then we use DLOOKUP everywhere in the database to read from that table. That's a little, that's okay, that works. But today we're gonna take it a step further. We're gonna make it so that the users can read and write values. And we're gonna wrap all of that in a function to make it much, much easier to put throughout your database instead of having to use DLOOKUP calls everywhere. But it couldn't hurt to go watch this video first to give you a little leg up on what we're doing today. Now this will be a developer level video, lots of stuff you gotta know before this one. So let me give you a list of prerequisites. Intro to VBA is first. If you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this, it's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. Don't worry, VBA isn't scary. You're gonna have to know variables. We're gonna use the trim function, bunch of functions today. We're gonna be using type conversion functions, especially C string, convert to a string. But you're gonna also wanna learn C long and C currency and C date. Where are you? C date, it's in there somewhere. We're gonna use a record set. We're gonna use DLOOKUP, the NZ function. Make sure you know how to use those nasty double double quotes. They confuse a lot of people. Some basic error handling little bit of SQL. We're gonna create our own functions. See, I told you I wasn't messing around with this one. Lots of prerequisites. This is one of the benefits of taking my full course is that I cover this stuff in order. You're gonna to need to know how to use by val, what that means. And we're gonna use the before update event. Did you get all that? Go watch all that stuff first if you don't know what any of that stuff is. And if not, you got a whole afternoon of videos to watch and then come on back and we'll get started. Alrighty, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. You'll find a link to this down below and all those videos that I gave you earlier, you'll find links to those in the description text down below the video window, okay? All right. So the first thing we have to do is set up a table to store our settings in. So let's create table design. Very simple table. It's just gonna be setting ID, that's our auto number setting name, that'll be short text, and then the setting value. And I'm gonna save that as long text. And the reason why is because that lets us store everything in the table. You can store text, you can store numbers, you can store dates, whatever you want, but they're gonna be stored as long text. So that field can accommodate everything. It's gonna be your job, however, when you read that value back to convert it to whatever you want. And we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later. So if you're storing a date in there, Right, when you read it, it's gonna be a text value. You're gonna to have to use cDate, those type conversion functions that I talked about earlier, and convert it to a date. All right, we're gonna go over some examples a little bit later. Let's save this as our setting T, primary key, yup, there we go. And let's put some sample values in here. Now, real quick notice in the extended cut for the members, we're gonna write a separate function that when you start the database, is gonna to check to see if this table exists. And if it doesn't, it'll create it for you. It's gonna be really cool. That'll be in the extended cut. All right, let's put in some sample names. It's basically name value pairs, right? So let's say you want to, like, um, like Graham mentioned earlier, order system, and then I'll put closed in here. You can put whatever you want, open and close, true and false, whatever. 
We're going to read that back later. And if that value is closed, we'll give the user a message that says, we're doing inventory. You can't get in here. What are some other stuff you can do? Well, let's how about the default state. Let's say this database is used by several different offices and you just set the default state to whatever state that office is in. Florida for this one, right? Let's do a numeric value. How about max family size? That's because on my customer form, I got a family size field just to, just to test a number. Let's set that to 20. So if the user types in a family size larger than 20, they get an error message. How about main menu notes? This will be a notes field you can have on the main menu, just like I did in the other system values video, but I'll show you how it becomes much easier to use now that we have it wrapped in a function. Uh, we'll just put in here, hi there. And this can be long text. All right, so now that we got some values in here, let's test this uh, order system closed. Um, let's do it first without the functions, and then you'll see how making functions for this can be a whole lot easier, right? So we're gonna assume that the only way your users can add an order to the system is by going through the customer form and clicking on the orders button. I like doing that in my databases. I like to have, so there's only one way for users to get to certain things. Obviously we have the database locked down so they can't get to this. You don't want your end users playing with this. I got many videos that show you how to lock this stuff down, hide this stuff. All right, so to create an order, they have to open the customer up first and then click the order button. If not, then you got to put the, the code to check this in the form itself. But if this is the only way they can make an order, we can just simply put the code in this button, right? Right click, build event. All right, so in this button code, we're going to look up that value. So we'll say dim s as a string, s equals nz, d lookup. So what are we looking up? We're looking up the setting value from the setting table where the setting name equals, now this is a string, so it has to be in double, double quotes. What's the name of that value that we created? Well, it's called order system. And then we're gonna go close the quotes, close the string, close the parentheses for DLOOKUP. What do we want if it's null? Just give it an empty string if it's null, and then hit enter. So it's gonna go to the setting table, right? It's gonna look for setting name equals order system and then bring back the setting value. So it's gonna go to here, go to the setting table, find order system and bring back this closed. That's what DLOOKUP does, right? Now, if S equals closed, then message box, uh, we're doing inventory, come back later. Or whatever you want the message to say, exit sub, right? Get out of there. Uh, end if yeah end if is fine you can do an else here if you want to but either exit the sub or do an else i like to exit the sub instead of doing an else this because if you do an else block later on in the future if you're not thinking you come in here and you do more stuff down here and you don't realize that it might not have passed this point so that's why i like to do an exit sub and just get out of dodge because everything that comes beyond that point is now moot right and if it's anything but closed, then it opens up the form. Okay, so save that, debug compile once in a while. Let's close this, close it, open it. Let's try to place an order. We're doing inventory, come back later. Oh, okay, all right. Now, it's Monday or you're done with inventory. Now you, the manager, can come back in the setting table and you can make yourself a nice pretty interface for this that only you can get to, the manager, right? And you just come in here and put in open like that. You can also put notes over here for yourself. I sometimes do that. I'll put a notes field in here. So I could put just for myself over here, you know, put put closed if you want to close the inventory system. So you remember what to do. Or you could make it a combo box on a form. You could do all kinds of stuff with this. I'm just showing you the basics, right? But now that the order system is open, boop, we can get back in. See, that's basically how that works. Now, this is all fine and dandy and it works. And this is basically what we did in the last video, but Wrapping all of this and remembering to do this as a DLOOKUP everywhere you want it, it just gets to be a pain in the butt. It'd be nice if I could just say, if get setting order system equals closed, then do whatever, instead of having to do all this DLOOKUP stuff everywhere, right? And that's why we wanna wrap this in a function. So let's go to our global module. And if you don't have one, create one. It's up here under create and then module, not class module, module. 
But in this database, I already have one right there, the global module. All right, and I'll put it right up top here. We're gonna make our own function that's gonna basically do the same thing, just return a value, right? So it's public, so everybody can use it. It's a function, because it's gonna return a value as opposed to a sub that does not. Get setting is the name of it. What are we gonna ask for? Well, we're gonna send in the setting name as a string, and it's going to return a string. That's what that means. Okay, get rid of the extra space down there. All right. Now, I don't usually put a ton of checking in here, like checking to see if this is an empty string, because this is a function that you, the developer, are gonna use. So you, you don't usually have to worry about end users breaking stuff if you are the end user. But it's up to you. If you want to make sure you want to, you know, future proof against yourself, you can say things in here like, uh, let's do get setting equals an empty string. And um, if setting name is an empty string, then exit, uh, exit function. In other words, you're setting the return value as an empty string, right? And if you somehow send yourself in an empty string, just exit out and return the empty string. That's what that does. This is stuff that you usually don't have to do if you're just protecting against yourself because you're not gonna use get setting wrong and send it an empty string, but you never know, you might. You know, you five years from now might be a dummy. <laughs> Usually you're smarter, but sometimes it goes the other way. All right, but assuming your code is good and you, you use it properly, we're gonna say in here, get setting is this basically the same thing we just did, nz dlookup. What are we looking up? We're looking up the setting value from the setting table where this gets a little more complicated now because it's gonna be the setting name equals, now, the quotes inside the string, close the string, and setting name, what you sent in, right, from looking for order entry system, right, if it's closed or not, and quote, 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 because you gotta close the quotes inside the string and then put that inside of a string itself. I know those double, double quotes are crazy, right? All right, close the D lookup, comma, empty string if it's null, and then close it. And what I also like to do is I also like to trim this, just in case there's extra spaces around it. And that's it, and that will return the value that the user asks for. Okay, and if you really wanna be sure that this is safe, you can put an on error resume next in here too. Just in case, in case this throws just any kind of an error, it's not gonna crash the database. If this thing errors out, you're gonna get returned an empty string. Okay, debug compile once in a while, save it, close it. Now in this button, instead of doing all of this, we can get rid of this stuff right there. And all you have to say here, instead of that looking up the S, you can just say if get setting, what setting are we looking for? It's, uh, what is it, order system equals closed, then do all that stuff. See how much easier this gets now? You don't gotta remember D lookups and field names and all that stuff anywhere. You just gotta remember get setting and the, and the name of the setting that you want. All right, save it, debug, compile again, close it, close it, open it, open it, and it worked. All right, now let's close the order entry system. It's Sunday. We're doing inventory. Everybody loves inventory, right? Come in here, mark this closed. Or, you know, open your manager form and, you know, check the box, whatever you want to do. Now when I try to open it, bam, doing inventory, come back later. See? But now, what does, what's the benefit here? We wrap that in a function. And this function's easy to use everywhere. And you can use it in more places than just your VB code. Remember that other setting that we did, default state? Well, watch this. Let's go into our state field. All right, let's go to the default value here. I'm gonna zoom in, shift F2, so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna put in here equals get setting. And what's the name of the, the field? It's a default state. Okay, so now the default value for the state field is get setting default state. Make sure you put that equal sign in the front. Save it, close it, close it, open it, go to a new record, and there's your Florida. Let's make sure it's not in the table. I just want to come into here in the, in the customer T, state. I think I did. Okay, I didn't put a default value in here. Good, so that, that proves that it's working. And if you want to change that, if you give this database to your New York office, 
All you got to do is go into the setting table and change this, whoops, change this to New York and then give them a copy of the database. Now when they go to add a customer, it's New York. Eh? Eh? See how easy that is now to change settings everywhere in your database? All right, we can do the same thing with checking the family size. You could put your notes field on the main menu. And more importantly, we can write a function to also put settings back to that table. All right, and we'll talk about all of that in tomorrow's class. So come back tomorrow, same, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I messed it up. <clears throat> Ready? <clears throat> Tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> I used to love that show. Uh, or members, you can watch it right now because I'm going to keep recording today and I'm going to keep doing this and we're going to see what happens. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.